I distinctly remember the moment. I am with my fellow engineers, and we're in a team meeting. And our manager comes and announces, we need fresh ideas. We have a customer presentation in two weeks, and we've got to win the business. So he looks at me and says, any thoughts? So my brilliant comeback was, uh... Uh, I, I, I had nothing. Deer in the headlights. I was scared. I was embarrassed. And I wished I could have told my manager, I don't have an idea right now for you, but I'll get you something tomorrow. So I'm that left brain analytical thinker in the field of engineering, and I knew that I had to harness my right brain creativity if I was going to succeed and innovate. I realized I could not afford to sit around and wait for inspiration to strike. None of us can. So whether you're an entrepreneur, a small business owner, or maybe you run a division of a global company, none of us can sit around waiting for inspiration to strike. So I realized I had to decode the gray matter in my brain so that I could engineer creativity. Hence the title of my talk, Engineering Creativity on Demand. So let's unpack this. Engineering, what do I mean by that? Well, it's just a process. It's a repeatable process that generates results. Engineering creativity. So what do I mean by creativity? So I'll ask you a question. What if I say, Bill is creative, Liz is creative, what are you thinking? You're automatically thinking, oh, Bill's an artist and Liz is a graphic designer. They're creative people. We naturally associate creativity with the arts. But I want us to expand our thinking just a bit. So we're gonna learn from Daniel Pink. And Daniel Pink is the author of The Whole New Mind and he helps us to expand our thinking about both the right brain and the left brain. And one of his concepts is the symphony. So picture a symphony, and there's a conductor. There's different instruments, different performers, different notes. And he pulls all of this together into one masterpiece. And so what we're learning from Daniel Pink What's in the greatest demand today isn't analysis in my left brain thinking, but synthesis, the symphony. Seeing that big picture, crossing boundaries, and being able to connect disparate pieces into an arresting new whole. I want us to take this and think a little bit deeper as well when we think about creativity. Because each one of you has a challenge. We all have daily challenges in your families, in our schools, in our communities, in our houses of worship. We daily face challenges. And you need fresh ideas to tackle those challenges. As humans, we are wired to create. You are wired to create. So we have engineering creativity on demand. So we live in an on-demand culture. And when it's Friday afternoon and I'm hungry and it's noon and I need my lunch, I pick up my phone, I press two buttons and I have a Jimmy John's number five with mayo on my desk in 15 minutes. And I have a pickle. <laughs> so my children are not nearly as patient as I am. I have a couple teenagers. And my teenagers will text me and they say, mom, 35 seconds later, I haven't responded. <laughs> and then I get the next text, Mom. And then another 35 seconds later, I still haven't responded because I'm at work. And then I finally get, Mom. So the definition that my kids have for on demand is that they need me to reply to them in 35 seconds. That's a little bit faster than freaky fast Jimmy John's. All right, we have engineering, creativity, on demand. That's what we wanna do. Now, how are we gonna do that? What is our process for doing this? And so the process for creativity is the three I's. 
It's a deliberate three-step process. And those three I's are input, incubate, and then ideate. And we're gonna explore each one of them. And we're gonna start with input. So we naturally think that our brain is either on in this input phase or off. So when my brain is on and I'm sitting in front of the laptop and I'm crunching numbers or I'm putting together a presentation, I am focused. And the part of my brain that is firing, where the neurons are firing, is the prefrontal cortex. And it's known as the executive function. My brain is in the executive function mode. And so when I say input, I'm thinking about my brain is on and focused. It's reading in all the senses, what I see, what I hear, what I'm writing down. Those are all the raw thoughts that are going into my brain during the input step of this process. Now, it's interesting, we know that phrase, I had a great idea out of the blue. No, it doesn't really work that way. Yeah, great idea went through you. And you're not gonna have that great idea if you don't put the raw thoughts into your brain, and that is the essential first step. Now, I have a question for you. How many times are you sitting in front of that laptop and you have a brilliant idea, aha! How many times does that actually happen? Probably never, it's never happened for me. Those great ideas do not pop when I'm in, or generally do not pop when I am in the input mode. I need to shift to that other mode of my brain. And so this other mode is when we think our brain is off. I'm daydreaming, looking at the clouds, going for a walk, maybe a run, and I think my brain is off. But what's interesting is my brain is not off. It has switched to a different mode. And that mode is what's called the mind-wandering mode. And it's also called the incubate mode. And so the part of the brain that is on fire in the incubate mode is a bunch of stuff back here. It's called the default mode network. And what's actually going on is all of those raw thoughts that you put in your brain, they are banging around in the back of your brain and their neurons are firing. And some studies show that your brain is even using more energy in the incubate phase than in the input phase. So one of the things that we learn about the incubate phase, and we learn this from Keith Sawyer, and Keith Sawyer is a creativity scientist, and he provides us a lot of valuable information about how our brains work. And one of the things that he's quoted as reminding us is that all great ideas and all great thinkers, they realize that there's this unconscious process that is going on, and that is when they have the great ideas. Think about Einstein. Einstein is quoted as saying, why is it that I have my great ideas when I'm shaving? I don't know, have you seen Einstein looking cleanly shaven at any time? <laughs> he was in the incubate mode and the mind wandering mode. And that's when he had his great idea. So what's actually going on, so the, so the incubate mode, the brain is firing, the neurons are firing, and all the raw thoughts are banging up against each other, and it's almost like you have a personal idea assistant back here. So I'm daydreaming, and my personal assistant's doing all the work behind here, and then a connection is made, and it pops out of the unconscious into the conscious. And I have that aha moment, I ideate, and I get a, a little bit of a hit of dopamine. So yes, I have that aha moment, and I get that hit of dopamine. Feels pretty good. So what's also really important is when I have that aha moment, when I ideate, it is very important for me to capture that great idea. So I had a great idea about six weeks ago. It was one idea. I didn't write it down. I can remember one idea, right? No. I did not remember. I still don't know what that idea was. So we want to capture it. You have a phone, and you can talk into that phone. You can draw on that phone. You can type into that phone. Capture your idea. Or maybe you're like my friend Gavin. So Gavin's a little bit like Einstein. 
He's not a physicist, but he's got that crazy Einstein hair, and he's a creative. And we're having a conversation about creativity the other day, and Gavin says, you know what? I get my absolute best ideas when I'm shaving. <laughs> wow, you're like Einstein. Gavin has something that Einstein does not have. He has a dry erase marker. And guess what? Dry erase markers work on bathroom mirrors. And so Gavin is drawing on the bathroom mirror, writing his ideas down. His roommates hate it. He's doing it anyhow. <laughs> Personally, I like tub crayons. But what's really important in this ideate phase, and you have that aha moment, is you've got to capture it. And you can be creative when you capture it. All right, so we now have the three I's for creativity, our three-step process. Input, incubate, ideate. The three I's for creativity. Now we wanna make sure that we remember these three I's. We wanna weave this into our daily lives. Because once we do this over and over and over again, we become a lot more confident in our ability to create. So we're gonna learn from Brian Tracy, and Brian Tracy is a productivity guru, and he wrote the book called Eat That Frog. So some of us in the business world, we're familiar with the term eat that frog. And so from a productivity perspective, eat that frog is just a metaphor for doing the most difficult, icky thing, eat that frog, first thing in your day. So in my planner, what I have is at eight o'clock on Monday morning, I do my weekly report. Because that's the icky thing that I don't wanna do. That is eating the frog for me. Now of course I have a cup of coffee first before I go eat that frog. So that's a metaphor that Brian Tracy has given us specifically for productivity. But we're not here to talk about productivity. We're here to talk about creativity. And we want a metaphor for creativity. But we're going to borrow from Brian Tracy's ideas. And our metaphor for creativity is dance with the frog. <laughs> because when I am dancing, you guys are going to be dancing soon too. When I am dancing, especially with a frog, I am not thinking. So dance with the frog is our metaphor for stepping away from the input phase, the input step, and allowing our incubating brain to take over and letting that magic happen. So what's really important about dance with that frog or dance with the frog is we want to put it into our daily schedule in your to-do list, whether you're using Outlook, to do whatever, schedule it. Now for you dancing with the frog, and you might incubate really well when you're walking your dog, running, swimming, whatever it is, schedule it. We have so much time in our day that we are focus, 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 focus. Put dance with the frog in your planner and in your evening. Because if you don't, you haven't freed up your brain to make those connections. You haven't allowed your personal idea assistant to take over and give you those great ideas. So for me, let's go for a hike. I schedule it, I make sure I do it on a daily basis. All right, we have engineering creativity on demand. We have the three eyes for creativity. Input, incubate, ideate. And we're gonna schedule it and dance with the frog. Now, I want to permanently sear this in your brains. And I mentioned we're going to dance a little bit. So, stand up with me. If I can get a room of 60 engineers to dance, I can get you to dance. So, I'm going to demonstrate first. Kind of shake it out, get ready. The dance we're going to do is based on the chicken dance. <laughs> yeah, you guys know the chicken dance. It goes like this. Da 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 All right. We are going to do the three-eyed frog dance. And it goes a little bit like this. Now, I'll show it to you. So we're going to do our motions. You guys got the motions down. Excellent. And so it will be da 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 da
Now I'm gonna, well you guys are, man, you guys are better than the 60 engineers I had. You're on it. <laughs> so we're gonna do this slowly at first, get faster, we'll do it three or four times. Here we go. Da 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 Faster! Da 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 Give, and you gave yourself a hand because that has now been permanently sealed into your brain. You will never forget it. You are welcome. <laughs> Woo! So as we conclude, we have a couple words from Rollo May. He wrote the book, Courage to Create. If you do not express your own ideas, you will fail to make your contribution to the whole. And so we now have the tools, we have the courage to create, but we also have, the, have to have the courage, we have to have the courage to share those ideas. Share those ideas with everyone around you. It's essential. Again, as humans, we're wired to create. You are wired to create, you have great ideas. Your local communities and our global future need your great ideas. You now have the tools <laughs> so that you can engineer your creativity on demand. Thank you.